Hey, how's it going, everybody? So uh, we're going to be learning today about Adobe Illustrator. So let's create a new file. And we're going to do uh, art and illustration. And uh, actually, let's do print. And we'll do just a letter, landscape. What's cool about this program is that you can easily change the size of your artboard at any time. And if you zoom out, you can see that this is your whole space. And uh, you don't have to keep inside this artboard. You can move stuff off to the side and put it back in. Um, you'll see you have a layers tab. You got your properties uh, right here. So if you don't see that, go to Window Workspace and reset it to Essentials, or Reset Essentials. It'll put everything back how it should be. <laughs> okay, so uh, first let's talk about, you know, this program can create shapes. So if you click here, you see all sorts of shapes. And when you create a shape, if you hold down shift, you get a perfect shape. So let's create a couple of uh, an ellipse here. Now, what if I want to make a copy of this ellipse? All you have to do in this program is hold down alt while you drag it to make a copy. So alt to copy, just like in Photoshop, we talked about that. So um, if you have two shapes that are right next to each other, and you can see that it'll give you these lines to tell you if it's a, uh, let me delete this one again. If you want to move it in a perfect line while you move it, hold down shift. Shift is going to be used to uh, make key proportions, perfect circle or square. It's also going to be used to shift to keep uh, straight so you don't go up or down when you move something. And if we take these two circles and we select them both by just dragging around it, you can see that inside of it, it kind of makes it a different shape. So we use Booleans to, uh, under the Pathfinder here, you can use Booleans to um, minus the front, to combine these into one shape, to make the difference, and to the exclusion where you'd end up with with uh, two shapes that are empty inside. So let's go ahead and do the, the um, third one. So you end up with this shape. And you can rotate it. And if you hold down shift, you can also get 45 degree increments when you do that. All right, let's create another circle. As far as the fill color and the stroke, you can affect those by going over here or here. Now be careful, if, if you click on this, now whenever you change the color, it's just going to affect the stroke. So you usually want to have that in front, that's the fill. Um, so let's go in and change the fill to one of our default colors. And we'll change the stroke to a different color. Let's choose blue, and you can increase the stroke size right there. You can also impact the stroke by clicking on this, and there's a lot of different options that we, you're eventually going to get a chance to play with. One of the ones I like to use is the profile, so you might want to have it start small and end big. Or sorry, start small and end small, or it can kind of fluctuate. Um, these can be pretty useful. You can also make arrows. It's not going to work on this, but uh, these are pretty useful just to know where they exist. Dashed lines if you wanted. And you can make the dash smaller or bigger. For now, let's get rid of the stroke. So I'll just click on the stroke and click the none option, which is that red slash. And uh, we are going to create a gradient for this. I delete this other stuff. So on this object, <clears throat> There's a couple different types of gradients. Use the gradient tool, which is a uh, shift of color over time. And you can see that that pops up. Now, let's pull out our gradient panel under Window. And let's see what else we can do with this. If You, you can also change it to a circular gradient. So let's do that. And then if you, on the gradient tool, you can move this white bar. Be careful you don't click somewhere else, because if you click in the wrong spot, um, 
it's going to end up doing that, and you, and that's not what we want it to do right now. So just make sure it's that black arrow. I'll push it up like this, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger by, oops. There we go, dragging on this little black dot right there. And you can see that we've now created what appears to be kind of a sphere. Now let's change the colors on this. So uh, we'll keep the black, we'll keep the white, but we're gonna also add a another color. Let's say blue. And and uh, instead of black, maybe we'll go like a really dark. So if I double click on that, and you can also um, you can you can choose your own colors or you can uh, choose one of the default colors. So if I went with like a light cyan. And if I move this away, this thing, then the uh, the um, bright one is going to take longer to flow into that. And the farther I get over here, the longer it's going to take. So if I do something like this, I end up with a uh, pretty convincing looking little sphere. And I could even put like a shadow behind it. So I'll just make this thing black. Uh, to move things around, you can go into your Layers tab. Click on that little drop down and switch them. Or what's even easier is you can just use Control and uh, the little brackets that uh, are next to the P key. And I'll show you what those look like. So if you want to um, change order with Control and then these guys. You can play with that. So select something and then just do control and then go. The right one will bring it up, the left one will bring it down. Oops. Okay, so uh, we got ourselves a nice little sphere right here. And uh, let's, let's do one more thing. Um, and that is we're gonna create the McDonald's logo using a, another type of tool. So I'm just going to find it and copy and paste. And if you want to, if you want to get the logo um, online, just search for the McDonald's logo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this layer by clicking on this. So now I can't move it around. I can still move other things, but not this one. Don't lock layer one because that'll lock everything. Lock just the image under your layers panel. So go back to properties. And now I'm going to get a, a, a circle, and I'm going to draw one. And it's you can see it's hard to see through this, so let's just give this thing uh, no fill. And we'll, for now, we'll give it a stroke of like something easy to see, like pink. And I'm going to take this uh, this uh, circle, and I'm going to try to get it so that it fits perfectly. If you hold down Alt, it'll pull it from both sides as opposed to just one. So I'll put that on here. It pulls it from the center. And let's make the circle bigger. A little bit. I think that that halfway point is actually gonna be right in the middle, right there. And I'll just go a little bit bigger right there. So that's perfect. Okay, so we can see that this is actually made up of circles or ovals. And I'm going to make a copy of it by holding down Alt. I'm going to use the right arrow key. And you see what I just did is I made a copy of it. Then I'm going to use the left arrow key without Alt to, uh, to um, put it right back to where it was. Alt, arrow, key, right. To any, any direction to copy. But then you just put it right back. So it's in exactly the same spot. Let me show you that again. That's a little complicated. Click on it. Hold down Alt, push the right arrow key, let go of Alt, and push the left arrow key to put it right back to where it was. And now we have a copy. And using Alt again, and I'm going to shrink that middle one down a little bit. So we end up with this. 
Now I'm going to take both of these guys, holding down Alt and Shift, I'm going to switch them over here so now I have a copy in the exact uh, other side. Then I'm going to use a rectangle. No, I'll just use, yeah. Yeah, let's just make it simple. I'm going to use a rectangle to start here. It's going to cut off the bottom, and then I'm going to go all the way to here. Actually, I'll push it right down here. And then I'll make another one right here. Okay. So, uh, a lot of times when we design logos, we don't just draw them. We actually do use shapes like this. So now I'm going to take the logo over here, all these things. I'm going to select them by drawing a box around them. I'm going to use this thing right here called the Shape Builder tool. And I'm going to click, drag, up. And what that does is anytime it sees a line, it's going to stop the shape. So we just created a new shape. And let me show you that again. Select it all using this Shape Builder tool, which is sort of like a, a Pathfinder, a Boolean. We're going to draw down up, and you got to let go. If it didn't work, just control Z and try again. Okay. Two of those. Okay. So I'm going to just deselect everything by clicking off of it. Click off of it and then select just this part and then delete all the rest. Now, to get that fill color to, this, to be the same as this one, we're going to use the eyedropper tool. We're going to click on that. And voila, we have ourselves an exact replica of the McDonald's logo. And if I wanted to put a black square around it, oops, I'll just go to the rectangle tool, draw my rectangle. Um, this will put it right back to black and white, and then I'll just get rid of that one and switch them. And then uh, all a control left bracket to pull it down below. And we have ourselves the McDonald's logo. We have ourselves a nice little sphere. And um, the other tool that we're going to be using a lot in this program is the, we don't use the paintbrush hardly ever. We're going to be using the pen tool. So if you are done with everything else and you have some time, I'd like you to play around with this. So if you click and then drag, so when you click, you leave the mouse down and you hold it, you can create complex shapes. And uh, you can play around with different gradients. And you'll see that in our gradients panel, there's actually a lot of gradients that are kind of default that we can choose from. And if you want more gradients, in fact, if you want more colors at all, you can find those. First off, you can go to your libraries. So if you want to use one of the um, color schemes you've already applied to your other compositions, such as the ones you did in InDesign, you can see that you have those colors there to choose from. But here's kind of a cool thing. If you go into uh, the appearance, go to the fill color, Let's just pick a, a single color instead of a gradient for now. Oh, how do I get my, rid of my gradient? I think I have one of these selected. Let me just click on it. There we go. Get off the gradient tool. Okay. Go down here to uh, swatch libraries, and you have all sorts of color libraries to choose from. So um, if I go into gradients, and there's all sorts of ones. Let's say I want to go with metals and I want to go with like a gold kind of color. So I click on him, I click on this. And I say him because I think I created a character accidentally. And you can choose all sorts of cool little gradients. Uh, and then again, there's a lot of things that you can choose from. So you can play around with in your libraries. If you want just solid colors, you could go with like I like the um, ice cream ones. Those are cool colors. You could do something like that. And if you want to change the stroke, you got to click on the stroke right here. And then you can click on this one. And now it's applied to the stroke, which I can increase the size of. And then you have something like that. And you'll notice that with this image, if I zoom in, it's made up of pixels. But on our recreation of it, there are no pixels. That's because we're using instead vectors, which are um, 
uh, these handles that I showed you earlier. Oh, and this is called the direct selection tool. This is going to allow you to adjust those handles. And so if you click on the, not the regular selection tool, which selects the whole object, but this one, you can come in and you can actually click on these points and adjust them. What a duck. He's a proud looking duck. Um, and you can even come in and if you decided you wanted that to be a corner, you can convert it to a corner by clicking over here. And if you want to put it back to a uh, anchor uh, smooth, you can do that. And then you can adjust the size of each of these. You'll see that when one moves, the other one also moves. If you don't want that to happen, you can uh, hold down Alt, and that'll make them each move independently. Sometimes weird things happen with the corners, as you can see right there. But when you do Alt, you lose the smoothness, and so now you're going to end up with corners like that. So it's better to not hold Alt if you're trying to have a smooth, rounded edge. And instead, if you want it, you can shorten one of them or elongate them to do what it is you need. They'll pull on the line. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that is later. Um, this guy needs an eye. I'm going to use one of the other colors from that color scheme right here to give him the eye. And let's switch those so that it's the fill color and I'll get rid of the stroke. Maybe I'll just put a little pupil in there. I just made a copy of it with my little alt trick. Cool. That's Adobe Illustrator.